Welcome to Story Chats at Inspi Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer, coming for, from a retreat center um, without my cat. So sorry to the Cooney watchers out there. <laughs> it's true. So Nicole Deese is with us today, and she is going to chat about her new book that just released, The Words We Lost. I'm going to read her bio real quick, and we'll jump in. So Nicole Deese is a Carol Award winner, a Rita and an Inspi Award finalist. When she's not working on her next contemporary Christian romance novel, she can usually be found reading one by a window overlooking the inspiring beauty of the Pacific Northwest. She lives in small town Idaho with her happily ever after hubby, two rambunctious sons, and a princess daughter with the heart of a warrior. Love that. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Nicole. Thank you for having me. It's a treat. <laughs> So we're going to start off like we often do when we have guest authors join us by saying, why don't you tell us a little bit about the book? Okay, so <laughs> the words we lost? I don't, yes, like, the words we I lost. Start? <laughs> <laughs> Not um, the one you're writing now. <laughs> yes, right. Those are those are very different, actually. So um doesn't matter that they're in the same series. They are very different. No, so the words we lost is... Um, takes place in one of my favorite places called uh, Port Towns in Washington. It is a real place. And it is about an editor who has recently lost her best friend, um, Cece, who is also her kind of best-selling author. And Cece was right in the midst of publishing uh, the last book of a YA fantasy uh, novel. And so Ingrid kind of believes that if she can just find um, and retrieve this last manuscript of her friends that she'll find closure in lots of different areas of her life, which of course includes a very dashing um, past romance, mm -hmm. uh, which of, of course. course the of mission course. is much, much more involved than that, but that kind of kicks us off um, to a lovely start, but it involves Ingrid having to travel home and her and uh, this past love interest, Joel, having to work together to bring some closure in lots of different areas. That's a fabulous summary. I love it. <laughs> yes. It needs so much room, right? In lots of different areas. Lots of different <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, lots of different things. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So um, Valerie, do you want to kick us off with our more in-depth questions? Uh-oh, did she freeze? Oh, I think Looks she like maybe um, she froze. So in, there, oh, there oh, you're back. Oh, nope. Oh. Are you back? Uh, if you're talking to me, yes, uh, I'm back. It looked okay. like you guys all froze. I was fine. Was no, you. you were. <laughs> Why don't you kick us off, Valerie? Sure. Um, I was really interested in the sea glass. So I would like to talk about sea glass because it is very cool. And Ingrid, who is the heroine, in case you guys didn't figure that out, um, recalls her dad saying that sea glass is what happens when sadness and salt water meet. So this is very poignant. Um, they are ocean tears. Uh oh, uh oh. Hmm. Just curious how you, um, what your experiences are with sea glass, I guess, and how well, how that came to be a part of the story. We lost you after ocean tears. So. Oh great! <laughs> it's this retreat center. They have yeah. really good Wi-Fi. They told me. <laughs> Um, so um, Ingrid recalls her dad saying that sea glass is ocean tears because the ocean is the only place big enough to hold all the sorrow in the world. Oh, so wow. I would just like you to take over in case I get lost here again, <laughs> and tell us sure. about, uh, about sea glass and your experience with it and the fact that there is black sea glass in the story and, and yeah, just, uh, tell us all. Yeah. I'm actually wearing right now a black sea glass ring oh, right there. So wow. Kind of fun. Um, and my, my neighbor has a um a mother who is just delightful. And she took a trip to Port Townsend um not long ago. So I don't know if you can see, I have all of the sea glass oh. on my desk that's actually oh, from wow. there. So it was Angela. lovely to write and kind of like look at that as I wrote. But um I just think that, you know, as I was kind of getting into some of the metaphors and symbolism of the story because it does it deals with friendship and family relationships and family dynamics and loyalties um and of course has a um grief journey that kind of 
goes from this isolated place to this more um, community focused place by the end of the book. But as I was kind of exploring those things, um, and as I took a trip to Port Townsend myself, and they have a they have a beach there actually called Sea Glass Beach, um, or Glass Beach, I started to really think about the ways um, that God can can work in our hardest, most shattered, most, you know, ugly places in our lives. And, and Silas, you know, starts with broken glass. Like usually it's trash, you know, that's left or, you know, bottles or beer bottles or whatever it is um, that gets, you know, wiped out, washed out into sea, tumbled, 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 and hits a bunch of stuff and, you know, kind of goes through its own journey before it's washed back up on shore and it's smooth and something that we collect. And um, so it just really as I was writing, that just became such a powerful illustration. Um, and even what's happened in my own heart, you know, after losing my sister several years ago, um, is kind of that most fragile, broken, shattered, something that you never can think, you know, God can use again. And 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 there it is, you know, um, something that we're, you know, astonished by and that we collect and that we that we look at as beautiful now. And I think it's just a true representation of what God does in the transformation of our own lives. I liked that um, you had some uh, snippets of memory from Cece, who was your mm -hmm. best friend. And uh, I also wrote down um, that Cece and her had talked about the sea glass and, mm -hmm. and her friend had said, my mom always says, God sees every tear we cry, that he collects them in a bottle, that he that then it makes sense that to see the ocean as his bottle. What if all our tears are out there somewhere, tumbling around in the surf, just waiting for their chance to become something beautiful? So mm -hmm. to me, that that was very, um, well, obviously it resonated with me or I wouldn't have made note of it. But yeah. uh, it, it, to me, it, it just really kind of almost encapsulates the story. So you've got a lot of that kind of poignancy, talking to the readers here now, or the would-be readers, that it's there's uh, a lot of that beautiful metaphor and um, explaining and, and seeing grief through mm. through the beauty of of the beach and the sea yeah. glass so just I really enjoyed that part and I have been to Port Thank Townsend you. as well so oh, um, yay. Yes, that was kind of fun <laughs> yeah he was from Victoria over yeah. and drove through there so yeah it's beautiful isn't yeah. it <laughs> gorgeous yeah yeah Narelle well, I'll, I've actually been to Whidbey Island, would you believe? So, yeah, <laughs> our, so cool. Author, yeah. Yeah, an author friend that lives up there. So, probably about nearly 10 years in it, 10 years ago, but it's a beautiful part of the world. I really enjoyed the mm -hmm. setting and enjoyed the book. But my question, I'm going to talk about Ingrid or Indy, as she's called later in mm -hmm. the story by those closest to her. Now, she is a senior editor at a publishing, traditional publishing house in San mm -hmm. Francisco and has been very successful because of her friend with CC, mm -hmm. obviously, being mm -hmm. a leading author. And I was intrigued by how she wasn't able to read after she lost Cece, she wasn't yeah. actually able to read and, and see stories in her mind. So my daughter mm -hmm. actually has... Um, yeah, I think it's aphantasia, I think, is a condition mm -hmm. where she will read and she cannot see what's going on. So I can't mm -hmm. listen to audio books and drive a car because I see the story, I don't see the road. It's incredibly yeah. dangerous. Yeah. 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 I can't, yeah. yeah. I find what, if I listen to an audio book, I literally have to lie down and close my eyes because I will not see where mm. I am oh when, I, when I'm in the story. That's how yeah. strong my visual pictures are when I'm reading wow. mm -hmm. as well as writing. So I was mm -hmm. just intrigued by where how you came up with that and what some of the causes can be of someone to temporarily not be able to connect and engage with what was mm -hmm. with the stories that are in front of her because she's failing at her job for this because she can't do a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have personal experience with it. Um, so I lost my sister in a car accident about nine years ago. And I was an avid reader, have always been an avid reader, and went from reading probably one um, one book every two days to when any passed. Um, I remember being in the airport on the way home from, you know, kind of going home and dealing with all the funeral preparations and all of that. And I opened up a book and I was just thinking like, my friend had been texting me like, read this book, just read a, you know, light, you know, something light, something, you know, that will kind of just trying to be helpful. And I it was the first time I opened a book and I 
I read the page probably six times and I had no idea what I was reading. Like, like I know my eyes were tracking the words. I just couldn't, I couldn't connect. And then, um, so that was, that is actually why I found audiobooks. I really thought I am ruined. Like, I don't know how, like there was no talk of trauma response at that point, um, but that's what it is. It's a trauma response. And, um, and there is, there are people like your daughter. Um, I looked that up as well. Cause I was like, is this something that I have now? Um, I have other friends that say, I don't see any pictures in my head. Like, I think there's a, uh, maybe like 5% of the population. So it's, it's fairly rare, but that is some people just don't, they've never had that, but this is a little bit different. This is more than just, um, not being able to create imagery, you know, in that movie in our mind, it's also really just not having, um, a comprehension, like a connection to the comprehension of what you're reading to be able to absorb it. And so for me, it lasted uh, a few years. I saw a counselor for for some PTSD revolving my sister's death. And then, so that's kind of how I knew like, oh, this is what this is. So in the meantime, I was able to, that kind of started my love affair with audio, which is now still a pretty big love affair. I love <laughs> audiobooks. Um, I listen to them probably 95% of what I read is through my ears. Um, and that's really because just my speed in general has slowed way down um, with my eyes. I just, I can't, I don't have that long-term um you know, longevity on, on the, on the written word, like I used to. So, and because I'm writing so much and I'm reading, you know, on a screen, there also is this element for me personally, that's like, uh, you know, that re represents work. So it's not as relaxing for me to <laughs> read with my eyes. Valerie's yeah. like, yes, you know, so I, I, was I love thinking that was coming. Yeah. 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 So I love to read with my ears because it does feel like an, a true escape, um, like a reader thing, but yeah, so that's kind of how that came up. I knew right away, like, gosh, First, it was like, what could this editor really be struggling with? That's a tangible struggle. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, hello. Like she can struggle with what I literally struggled with for, you know, a lot of years and have only just kind of gradually uh, seen improvement, you know, as my own um, grief journey has has kind of, you know, evolved over the last few years. But that's that's kind of where that came from was oh, and it, it, that's what I was also going to say. What was interesting was I never heard anyone talk about it. And then 2020 hit and all of a sudden I started seeing posts, which is, I only started writing this book in early, uh, probably late 21. And I started making note of all these people's posts from readers saying, I'm, I don't, the weirdest things happening. Like I'm not able to connect with my words. And suddenly I was like, okay, this is bigger than just something that happened to me. I'd never read about it or talked about it with anyone that was like, that's happened to me before. So I started just kind of documenting um, how people were describing it. And, and that's why I never give it a name in Ingrid's uh, narrative is uh, that I don't think it has a name. I just know that it's a, it's a trauma response. Mm. And I think a lot of readers went through that same trauma response during the pandemic, you know, in various lockdown situations, because um, their mind was stressed, you know, they weren't able to escape like they used to be able to escape. So it's kind of interesting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting. I love it. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, this makes it my turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and and we may have already touched on them, but maybe you can elaborate some more. What what do you like? Because as I was reading this, there are so many things um, like Valerie touched on. There are a lot of poignant parts. Um, and then at the beginning, like sea glass is just this beautiful uh, metaphor for God's love for us and how he works in us. But what, there, there are tons of themes. <laughs> what do you think are. Like, <laughs> like your primary theme or what, what do you like if, if a reader read it and walked away, what would be the, the one thing that you really hope that they would take with them? other than some really enjoyable hours in the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think we touched on one, which is just that God uses, you know, our most painful, you know, moments and um, experiences for his good and really hopefully believing that at a new level, seeing that um, play out at a different level, that even what feels like unredeemable, God can, can take and redeem. I think that's one, um, I always tend to write stories as well that really try and highlight the hands and feet of the church or of God's people. Um, I'm a big believer in how community, how God uses community to heal. Um, and I hope that they can see that in, in this story that even when we feel 
um, kind of tempted to walk certain journeys alone that we never, we, we can't see the fullness of, of the Lord's hand or um, kind of the abundance that he has for us in life when we are solo, you know? Um, so, and there's obviously a big difference between being single and being isolated. And so I really try and make that differential in the story. Uh, and so hopefully, I hope that it's encompassing that just, you know, journeys are meant to be shared, even our most painful and how it's surprising sometimes the way that God will bring certain people in or uh, allow certain things to happen um, just to, to show us, you know, he's there. I love every single word of mm. that. That's fantastic. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and I would say, um, I would say that your book, well, of all the books that I've read by you would definitely do that. Um, that's fantastic. I love that it's mm. intentional. Um, you know, that yeah. it's not I mean, there's not that it would be bad if it was accidental, but I love that you, <laughs> you have this, this heart for something that you're intentionally seeding into stories. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think mm -hmm. often readers, I know for me, I'm more receptive to things sometimes that I need to work on in my life. If I get it sort of subconsciously <laughs> through a story, yes. Versus, yes. you know, like a yes. sermon on, <laughs> on Sunday morning. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, do either of you, Norel or Valerie, want to expound or pull further on that? Or shall we transition into some some humorous just, this and that? <laughs> I would just like to encourage people to give this a read. Excuse me, a little mm. frog in my throat here. Um, because I, I, I'll just admit, I struggled a little bit at the beginning because um, she's working with um in her company her boss is well, mean and i don't love mean girls in stories i think we talked about this just a few <laughs> weeks ago people um so um i was like okay okay um but it um i mean first of all that was important and secondly once she returned home to port townsend it the the it, it changed not the story didn't change the story is as is from beginning to end <laughs> but um because i enjoy the beach more than mean girls um <laughs> i i enjoyed reading from there on in and then i became very invested and and read more quickly perhaps and stayed up later and all that good stuff so just would really encourage you guys to go out and give this a read because it's worth your time and if you read the first chapter and you're like well i'm not really sure then give it a couple more. I will mm -hmm. say at the risk of needing like hashtag spoiler alert, Sabrina is truly evil. Like you, you really mm -hmm. like, she's like the devil wears Prada level of evil, <laughs> yes, she um, but she <laughs> yeah. has a very satisfying ending. Um, <laughs> it, it's a very, very satisfying, well worth the wait to get to ending. Um, because True. yeah, it's, it's very satisfying how Sabrina ends up. I was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was very satisfied. <laughs> here. Yeah. But I think yeah. Sabrina was also very realistic to me, very real to life, mm. because there are some very ruthless people in the world that will um, climb on your shoulders and they'll stomp you down to climb the greasy mm -hmm. pole to the next level. And you'll come across them in all areas of your life. It's not just in yeah. a work environment. And that's why there's so many issues of workplace bullying and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. because yeah. She was the unapproachable boss who should have been there, should have had a duty of care to support Ingrid. Mm -hmm. And instead she's just trying to kick her out like she's old garbage because she was jealous mm -hmm. of her. So I thought life, that was well done. Yeah. yeah. In Thank real you. life, they don't always get like justice the deserve. way that we would like mm -hmm. it needed out. So yeah. um, so just hang and in there for the, for the justice that comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was totally non-scripted, but whatever. Sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> All right, so um, so we like to then uh, put you on the hot seat with some th some this or that, um, and you can explain as much or as little as you like for your okay. choice. Um, Norelle, you want to go first? I will go first. So, island or a city like San Francisco or Seattle? Island, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. for sure. I'm I'm not a big city. I used to love cities, but I you know <laughs> not anymore. Okay. Valerie. 
Which would you prefer to read? A Marriage of Convenience or Jilted Bride? Contemporary in both cases. Oh, I just read a phenomenal Marriage of Convenience story by Jenny B. Jones. So definitely that one. That was one of the best books I've read in a long time. <laughs> oh, <excellent. laughs> yeah. right, well, now you have to give us the title because people are uh, it's called Yes, yeah, called First to Fall. It's a second of it's second book in her um, in a series, but you can read it as a standalone. I did. I, I hadn't read the first book, and it's just enemies to lovers. Oh, fun! It is the one of the most funniest, just well done books I've read in a long time. So loved it. Loved That's every minute. Cool. <laughs> oh, excellent. All right. So I feel like as romance authors, we all have opinions on Mister Darcy. Except for mm. Valerie. She's like the exception <laughs> to the rule, but that's okay. Most of us have opinions on Mr. Darcy. So Colin Firth or Matthew McFadden? Uh, Matthew. Really? <laughs> Wait, oh, is that, no. is he, he's the one who, <laughs> I know, but you know what I haven't, the problem is I haven't seen the original in so like our one action. Uh, is that the original in so long? I literally watched the Kira Knightley version every single Christmas time okay. and so that's my most that's kind of like in my head the most sure right. so I haven't, given, I haven't given Colin a chance in a long time so maybe I need to revisit I will <laughs> gladly revisit <laughs> all right we'll allow it we'll allow it okay, you're not okay. alone you're not okay. alone there are yeah. people there are Matthew lovers out there I'm not one I am team Colin all Honestly, way. it's so probably <laughs> been it's probably been twenty three years since I've seen the other one, so I oh, it's wow. probably time for a revisit. Definitely. I probably should do yeah. that. Okay, maybe set, I will set aside six hours and just okay. You know. <laughs> I know, and that's the thing. That's it's like, the do I have six hours to do <laughs> yeah. this? But right. I have a daughter who loves who loves Pride and Prejudice, so maybe I'll I'll make the time with her. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> after deadline, <laughs> yes, yeah. After yeah, that can yeah. be your re reward. That yes, deadline I love, reward. I love <laughs> deadline rewards. That's how I get through the deadline. So that's good. Yeah. You, you, just, uh, you said this is a sequel to um, The Words We Lost. Can you give us this, like that much? Yeah, give us a teaser. Um. Okay. I haven't done this yet. Um. So yeah, I'm about 85% uh, into it at this point. It's due in very soon. Um. So it is... It's, really the carryover from the first book, which is uh, just the publishing house. And then Chip, who is the assistant editor, he he remains kind of a secondary character through all three books in the series, but it is entirely new cast of characters. Um, it is about a youngest of three daughters whose mother is a kind of superstar um, country music artist and she, my, my heroine is named Reagan. Um, and she wants to be a writer, but she's kind of been sucked into the family industry and has kind of just been the, the yes man to all things um, in the music industry, even though that's not her preference to do. And then one day she gets a phone call that there is a secret tell all happening um, from someone in their very close circle that they is anonymous. And so she decides to maybe um, take a hand at writing something herself without letting anyone know. And so the entire book takes place on the road on in two weeks time. Wow. <laughs> so it's so it's very mm. different than the first book, um, but lots of fun. And uh, there is a yeah, there is an adorable bus driver thrown into the mix who is there for his own personal reasons and is not just a bus driver. He is has some secrets of his own. So, Excellent. yeah. All right. Mm. So if we're going to we're going to keep seeing. Yes. Keep seeing what? Chip. 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 Yes. That's yep. Cool. Chip is my he is my connecting thread through will, all three. So will he get coffee girl in the end? He will, he has a romance, a Bruin. Okay. Yes, he oh, does. Bruin. Yes. <laughs> nice. Bruin. And it, it may, he's, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, uh, that he will get a little novella of his own at Excellent. some point. So, because okay. yeah. I, I right now love, he's got to remain. We're team yeah. Chip. I loved Chip. Yeah. He was, he was yes. such a fantastic addition to the story. Oh, for all good. that he's not a huge yeah. character. He's, he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love writing those humorous kind of spontaneous, you know, one line loving 
characters. So he he fit the bill on a lot of marks. And he was not even one funny thing about Chip is he was not planned originally. He came about chapter three. I was like, I need someone else, you know, that I just need someone else like a chip. And um, <laughs> it was Connell and Cassette, my, one of my one of my writing friends, my critique partner, who was like, what if you had this guy and he's kind of like a puppy dog, but you know, and I was like, yes, that's exactly what I needed. So it's funny. He kind of evolved through that. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right. So um, let us know what, what is next? This one you're writing, is that, yeah. will that be out next, next year? Does it have a title? Yes. Yet? It does. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it yet. Okay. All right. Well, I don't, don't want you to not. We, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So we'll keep our yeah. eyes peeled for yeah. that. Tell us your okay. website and where people can find you. Sure. Um, it's just NicoleDeese.com um, is my website, which has my newsletter subscriber list on there. And then uh, I'm most active as far as social media is on Instagram. And that's just, again, Nicole Deese author. So I'm also on Facebook, but yeah, which is also probably Nicole Deese author. So it's real <laughs> original. <laughs> no, it's good. It makes it easy. To find. It easy. Yes. Yeah. It's a good thing. All right. Pretty well, thank easy. you so much. Thank you. This was real, thank super you. fun. And we really loved the book we talked we have a little Facebook chat where we keep organized yeah. and stuff and we all had as we were reading little things would pop up we were just we had a lot of fun reading this book oh so. well thank you very much <laughs> we're My very pleasure. glad that you would join us today and yeah. um, thank you everyone else for watching and and or listening if you're not on YouTube but if you are on YouTube don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell we would love to hear what you have to say um, when you have finished reading the words we lost. So go forth and read it and then come tell us what you have to say, what you think. And yeah. we will look forward to seeing you again next week. In the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye everybody.